Hi, welcome to Neural Splendor. I wanted to talk a little bit about the IFSM, which is the Integrated Fuel System Module. That was on the Cummins ISX engine from 1998 until 2010 when it changed into common rail. The IFSM was the uh, fuel system center on the engine. The ECM controlled it. It consisted of a gear pump, solenoids, pressure regulators, check valves, and it directed fuel into the cylinder head to the mechanical injectors. So let's take a look, a quick overview of the pieces of the IFSM. Here we're looking at an IFSM IFSM assembly that's laying on a on a bench off of the engine. It's in a drain pan. The IFSM itself, number two, is an aluminum housing that comes down. It's an L-shaped housing. Uh, all those pieces that have numbers on them are bolted to that L-shaped aluminum housing. The housing has internal drilling passages in it that have plugs in it. It has a couple check valves in it that are replaceable. So we'll start with number one, that's the high pressure gear pump. Uh, that is driven by the injector cam. The injector cam has a gear towards the center of it. And that IFSM housing, the gear pump bolts into it. There's a small gear on the end of it. It mates with an idler gear that is pressed into the IFSM housing. If the idler gear goes bad or the bushing it's on or the shaft it's on goes bad, you have to replace the IFSM housing. You can't replace the gear. The idler gear, when you bolt the IFSM to the side of the head, goes in and mates with the gear on the injector cam. So whenever the injector cam's turning, gear pump number one is turning. That will pull fuel from the tank and build it to about 275 to 295 PSI for running down the road. Fitting number 11 up there on the top is where you can check total system fuel restriction. It's a beautiful fitting to check that entire system. That was a great idea when they engineered that in. Fitting number 12 on the back of the gear pump measures the pressure made right inside the pump. That can be upwards of 320 to 340 pounds. Over on the right, number seven, you can't see it. It's behind the cap off, silver cap off fitting on the return fuel fitting. Number seven is a, a large nut, about 11 16 wrench size, approximately. And that is a, a mechanical check valve that limits that gear pump's pressure to about 320 PSI in the IFSM. Uh, fitting eight is return fuel out of the gear pump and the uh, solenoids, the four solenoids on the front, back to the tank. That's part of the cooling process. There's two solenoid number threes and two solenoid number fours. Those are precision metering valves that are run with pulse width driven by the ECM. Those solenoids, the solenoids number threes, the threes are metering or fueling, and that is what the ECM uses to control the horsepower and torque and the power band of the engine. Those solenoids send fuel into the head to the number, the, the left solenoid sends fuel to the front three injectors and the solenoid on the far right sends it to the back three injectors. Likewise, the center solenoids, the two number fours are timing. The timing solenoids, if they fail, you'll, you'll have heavy white smoke out of those three injectors, if both of them are unplugged, the engine won't start. So timing, the timing solenoids are critical as well, but in my opinion, not as critical as the fueling in this engine. Number five is the uh, electromagnet called the fuel solenoid. It is driven by a straight 12 volts or 24 or 32, depending on the uh, machine system and the, volt, the running voltage. The solenoid is 12 volts. When you turn it on, it pulls some metal plates against itself and opens up passages so that the engine will run. When you turn the ignition off, that number five, that silver uh, battery stud there, it goes dead. 
uh, no power to it. And then a spring, a Belleville spring, sort of shaped like a bent Frisbee that's right inside that magnet, pushes those plates closed. And the fuel stops and the fuel pressure actually holds those plates closed. And then the engine will shut down. Number six is the low pressure fuel regulator. It regulates the pressure between 250 and 295 PSI. Number 10 is the top of the fuel filter. Number nine is the electric lift pump assembly. On the right side of number nine out of the picture is the fuel suction fitting that goes to the line that comes off of the primary fuel filter on the frame. It's usually a number 10 fitting. Over on the left, you see that steel line that comes up with the black wrap on it. That goes to the ECM cooler plate. It runs diesel fuel through the cooler plate. And then that diesel fuel comes back to the IFSM. And that is to cool the ECM that is bolted to that plate. The IFSM itself has many drillings and passages in it. I have only ever seen two that failed, that internally cracked. Not sure why it did, but it did. When that happens, you'll have fuel system faults all the time. Down under the number three solenoid on the left, you see that red shiny plastic. That's another test fitting that you can test the fuel regulated pressure. And next to that on the right is a, a, a sensor that measures fuel pressure. That's that test fitting and that fuel pressure sensor need to read just about the same pressure around 275 to 295 running. Uh, if that fuel sensor that's there goes bad, the ECM will shut the engine down, even though it does have good fuel pressure. Hope you enjoyed my little piece on the IFSM. See you next time on Neural Splendor.